we can do the reverse of this. Yeah, we can do the reverse of this. So if we type in the probability, and I'm going to go for 0 0.158655, you'll see why in a second. Uh, the mean uh, uh, from coming from this cell, standard deviation coming from this cell. So stop the video, have a good look around the spreadsheet. What value is this going to return? So normf is the inverted normal distribution. So for the first example, just sampling the normal distribution, we were putting in values, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you invert the normal distribution, we're not putting in the values, we're putting in that percentage figure, and that percentage figure. So we're telling Excel how far along it should go along the normal distribution from zero to one. Excel is going to do that and then return the number from wherever it gets to. Now, if you're very observant, you'll be able to work out what's going to happen here. Let's hope. Going to hit enter here. And we've got a value of 3.999, which is almost four. So how could you have worked that out? Well, because down here in our data table, I can see that four is 15.8% 15 15 if you like of the way across the normal distribution. So when we're using the inverted normal distribution, uh, I can put that figure in and Excel is gonna work back to four because it's gonna go 15% of the way across the distribution and then return the value on the X axis of where it gets to. So that's how we can invert the normal distribution and use random numbers. Use random numbers to sample it. How cool is that? Because when we're using the inverting the normal distribution here, uh, we can use a value between zero and one, a value between zero and one to get us a sample value. And in this case, uh, we've returned the value of 3.999. How can we get a value between zero and one? That's our RAND formula, yeah? So we could just have a RAND formula in here. There we go, and then hit the F F9 key, and Excel is going to run, and let's let's just complete the demonstration. As usual, gone, gone miles off track here. But, um, and let's, also not commit schoolboy errors and let's make sure we uh, put the absolute references in where we need them. So we've taken a load of samples of the normal distribution here. That's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take the va these values between 1 and 12 again. I'll just take 1 to 10. I'm just going to count the numbers. I'm, I'm going to round these numbers. Uh, just so they become um, integers, just so they're easy to analyze. That, that means we don't have to analyze a continuous distribution using the frequency formula, which we are going to do later. Okay, I can now use count if. So this range, F4, then this criteria here. Okay, so when I copy this down, what's the distribution of these numbers going to be? Okay, can you see that? looks normally distributed to me. And let's uh, underline this, just gonna insert a column chart here. And we can see that, there it is. We don't need series one, let's just select data here. Here's our chart, so get rid of series one, okay. Okay, and there's our chart. So can you see how that's all worked through? So I've sampled, the normal distribution using a random number. So I've got what? I've got 700 random numbers, 700. I've sampled it 700 not times the normal distribution. So what would happen? Well, when we do the analysis, do the analysis of the values that Excel's returned, they should conform to the normal distribution, of course, because that is the distribution that we're sampling. So maybe you understood that maybe you didn't i'm not sure i don't think i would understand that if it was like my first time uh tackling this topic but if you can that kind of closes the loop uh on this topic if you can understand how the normal distribution works and then how you can sample from the normal distribution and get that percentage figure but then suddenly 
subsequently use that percentage figure to sample the normal distribution the other way around, uh, the norm inf, inf function. If you understand how to do that, you can then harness the normal distribution in your business simulations and use it to generate random data. If none of that has made sense to you, just follow it through as far as you can. Uh, you know, copying what I've done in, in this explainer video, copying what I do in the walkthrough and just get it working in practice. That's a great way to learn the theory. Get it working in practice. The theory's going to make a lot more sense to you. I'll see you in the next video. Hi everybody, it's Chris here. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoy getting to know the normal distribution. Now this video is taken from our course which is Excel VBA Business Simulation from beginner to professional. We've got 41 videos in there, over 10 hours of content. I'm going to take you through it step by step, how to get to grips with cool statistical techniques like this and get them working for you to generate powerful Excel models that are going to do things like simulate our business situations, which is super cool. I've done a few projects like that that have turned out really well, but also to do things like generate random data sets, a really important practical thing that if you ever have to do Excel training sessions, or if you have to populate models with data, you can do that at the click of a button. We're going to go through all of that in the Excel VBA business simulation course from beginner to professional. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to see you over there. The click is in the description below this video.